Hello world, I'm Benjamin, and this is Source Decoded. Is JavaScript easy? It's not simple, for sure. There's kind of a lot to it. It's grown over the years, and there's always new pieces being added. Besides that, there's always a new framework or toolkit or something that's coming along, it seems like, every day. But is JavaScript itself easy? Well, is speaking easy for you? Uh, speaking is not simple. In fact, it's way more complicated than JavaScript. Um, but most people over the age of three or four manage to do it pretty well with some practice. So if speaking is easy for you, then there's a good chance JavaScript can be too. I think JavaScript can be easy as long as you don't try to learn the whole thing all at once. This series of videos is going to take JavaScript one piece at a time and build on some fundamentals. If you stick with it, you can learn JavaScript and it can become easy for you. But you're going to have to do most of the work. I hope to give you all the information you need to understand how it works. Not just what to do, but how things are working. And from there, you can learn JavaScript. Now, JavaScript and many other programming languages might be easy, but programming is not. Knowing English doesn't make you a poet. But in order to write poetry, you need to learn a language first. So let's learn a language. First, let's talk about computers. A computer is a data processing machine. It has instructions for how to deal with information. You can basically boil programming down to these two ideas, the data and the doings with the data, the information and the instruction, the stuff and the stuff you're gonna do with the stuff. Your job as a programmer is to give the computer information and then tell it what to do with it. In a computer, data comes in and data goes out. Sometimes data comes in and then we change it a little bit before we send it out. Sometimes we have the computer make up brand new data at random. But whatever a computer does, it does with data because doing things with data is all the computer does. When you type on the keyboard, you input data. When you wiggle the mouse around, even if you don't click on anything, you're inputting data. When you point your web browser at a web page, it goes and downloads a bunch of data and then it operates on it. The computer takes in all of this data and then uses these instructions to operate on it, to calculate your budget or decode a video from the internet or predict the temperature for next Tuesday. Your job as the programmer is to give it the instructions it needs to operate on that data. Over the years that computers have existed, we've come up with a lot of different ways to give instructions to computers. Because the computer's native language is so hard to understand, a few smart people who know that language have taught the computers new languages that are easier for us to understand. And these are programming languages like Python or JavaScript or C++. Because there are so many different kinds of problems that we want the computer's help solving, we've come up with a lot of different programming languages, and each one is tuned for a specific purpose or is better at this or better at that. But you're here to learn JavaScript. JavaScript was invented to allow web pages to do things. Before JavaScript, a web page was just data. Your browser went out to the internet, it downloaded a bunch of information and displayed it on the screen. You could scroll up and down and click between links and that was about it. JavaScript started there, but it didn't really stay there. And as time progressed, it had a lot of things added to it. So JavaScript has kind of a complicated history. And because of that, there are beautiful parts and there are ugly parts. And by beautiful, I mean, there's parts of the language that make it really natural and easy for you as a human to express to the computer what you want it to do. And the ugly parts are inconsistent. They don't really do what you might first think that they should do. As I talk about JavaScript, I'm gonna try and stick to the beautiful parts and not wade into some of the ugly stuff. A lot of web programmers sometimes like to take these ugly pieces of JavaScript and then they'll throw them at each other and say, hey, can you guess what this is gonna do? And it can be fun, but it's not a really great way to learn a language. Now, good parts, ugly parts, pretty parts, bad parts, like it or not, JavaScript is the language of the World Wide Web. It is pretty much your only option when it comes to making a web application or a web page that does interesting things. 
And it's also becoming a popular backend language or a language that you use on a web server that generates the information to send to a browser. Now, I think JavaScript is a good programming language. I think it's a good first programming language because it's widely available and there's a lot of information about it on the internet. It's easy to find answers to your questions most of the time. JavaScript also lets you get away with certain things that many other programming languages would just crash at. Now, I don't necessarily think that this is a good feature. On the one hand, it does, I guess, make it easier to get into the language and make it do stuff. But on the other hand, it can kind of promote bad habits that'll stick with you for a long time. I hope that JavaScript is not the only language that you learn. So I want to help you form good habits that will serve you well in the future. So that's enough talking. Let's write some JavaScript. To get started, all you need is a computer. It's going to have to be one of the kinds that sits on a desk or a lap because what we're going to do can't be done on a mobile device, at least not easily. Go to your computer and open a new browser window. This can be any browser you want. It should work in pretty much anything. I'm going to use Chrome most of the time just because it's the browser that I use. Go to the address bar and type about colon blank. There's no HTTP or www or anything else, just about colon blank and hit enter. You should be greeted with a blank page. This is the secret web developers canvas in which you can experiment and do whatever you want. Now for this next part, uh, if you're on Safari, you might have to do some extra steps to enable developer tools. So if this next step doesn't work, go to Google and figure out how to enable developer tools on Safari on the Mac and then come back and follow along. But I'm going to right click just anywhere on this page and select inspect. If you're in a different browser, this might say inspect element or something else, but it'll be similar. And when you do that, the developer tools will open. They may open to the right or to the left or to the bottom or even a number in another window. It doesn't matter. But this is one of the reasons I like working on the web so much because the developer tools are so good and they're built into all of the browsers. There's a lot of stuff going on here and most of it is really cool, but today we're just gonna focus on this tab called console. You click on that, what you've got here is the JavaScript console. This lets you put JavaScript in and run it immediately. So let's, let's write some JavaScript. We're going to treat this as a calculator to begin with. I'm going to say two plus two and see what happens. Oh my goodness, the answer is four. What a surprise. Now, if you just did this, you wrote some JavaScript and you compiled and executed it and it was really easy. So now you can go to parties and brag at your friends that you have written JavaScript and run it successfully. I mean, you're practically there. Good job. You can experiment with this some more. Uh, we can chain these things together. Oh, look, and we can also add, what's six minus five? Oh, that makes sense. Um, and then we can divide stuff too. You can mix the operations. What's five plus three times 11 divided by four minus two. We can use parentheses to group things together to make it more clear. What's 11 plus five plus four? Sorry, yeah, I can type divided by three. Oh, that's interesting. Or what's 11 plus four divided by three? Ah, that's something else. Now, remember when I said at the beginning that programming was all about information and instructions? Well, when we say 11, that is information. And then when we put in like multiply, that is an instruction. And then let's give it another piece of information. And then you have a program that the computer can execute. That is programming and that is JavaScript. In the next video, we'll talk about in the next video, we'll talk in more detail about what exactly is going on here. But before I finish this one, I wanna point something out. Remember that when you type on the computer, you're putting data into the computer. And look at what you just put in. You put in some information and some instructions, but you put it all in as data. That means that a program, which is instructions, is really just information. That's all for now. You'll see me in the next one.